Welcome. We're glad you've joined us. And we really can't tell you how much we do appreciate the fact that you take the time to listen to these messages that my husband shares from the Word of God. And uh, several have told us that they're really encouraged from these studies. Mm -hmm. And um, that um, that's good news because as we study God's Word, it should be an encouragement to our hearts. And I wanted to share a few verses from Psalm 91 as we get started today. Mm -hmm. We live in a day and age where there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of anxiety, and there's a lot of stress going on. People are worried about things, and we need to just put our trust in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So Psalm 91 is a really good passage of scripture to just know that we are secure no matter what is going on in the word in the world around us. So I picked a, a few verses from this chapter to read as we begin today. Um, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Amen. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snares of the fowler and from the noosome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shalt thou trust. He his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall, they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful again that we can come into your presence. Thank you for the scripture reading that Patty just had. Uh, here in the 91st Psalm to be an encouragement for us in this day and age in which we live. How much even more so to those individuals who become believers in the time of the tribulation. So we thank you again for this opportunity and hopefully many people will hear these messages. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray that they will respond in faith and trust in you. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we're in the Gospel of Matthew. This is our second message now in Matthew chapter 25. And this previous message to this one in chapter 25 dealt with the 10 virgins. And we showed how that five of them were prepared uh, to meet the bridegroom when he and the bride both came uh, to prepare people to join in for the festivities after the uh, wedding ceremony had been completed and five were not prepared. And so that is actually dealing with the Jewish people. We've been talking about the time of the tribulation in Matthew chapter 24, the warnings that were given. And so now Jesus has moved on to warn them about the time that is yet future. And the application is, is that these individuals need to be prepared all the time. Now, two things to keep in mind. Many people think that chapter 25, which is dealing with the millennial kingdom, not the church age, not the uh, time of the tribulation, but the time immediately following the tribulation. And these first two uh, descriptions that are being given here are not parables, and neither is the third illustration that the Lord uh, gives us here. But these are actually what the first two are called similes. That is, they use a word like, uh, for the example, the word like or likeness or the word as, as a comparison. Mm -hmm. And so those are called similes. These are not parables. Whenever Jesus used parables, he always called them parables. So again, this is another figure of speech. The last one, and we'll look at that in our next session, has to do with the judgment of the nations. And again, that one is a metaphor 
because it's not going to be dealing with the people that are Jews, but how the people of the world treated the Jews in the tribulation. So these first two, which can have application for us today, are encouragements for us to walk by faith and trust that what we're doing is what God wants us to be doing right now, every day, every moment in our lives. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing I wanted to point out to us is these three illustrations, these figures of speech that are given here, the first two are similes, which is making a comparison that uses like or as, and verse 1 and verse 14 both use that terminology when he says he uses the word like. And the direct comparison that is made in verse 31 is a metaphor. And that metaphor is a direct comparison that's made. So, again, these are not parables. And I know there's many commentaries and so forth that say that they are, but Jesus doesn't call them parables. Okay, so keep that thought in mind as we move through some of the things that we find here. Verse 14 says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. So these individuals have been given responsibility to maintain the goods that their master, or you can call him Lord because the word curios means Lord or master, mm -hmm. so that Jesus Christ gives individuals gifts. And those gifts are for work, they're for uh, service, and the specific person of the Godhead that empowers us, of course, will be God the Holy Spirit. So we'll talk more about that in just a few moments. But he says that he's getting ready to travel off to a far country and he's going to leave his servants in charge. And again, we're talking about people in the time of the tribulation and we're speaking specifically here of the Jewish people, uh, individuals who uh, live in Israel. Uh, and these individuals in this simile are going to be judged by their works, how they handled the goods that God gave them. So in verse 15, you see that uh, the master gave uh, five talents to one. He gave another individual two and another individual he gave one. And notice what it says there in verse 15 at the last part of that verse about how he made the determination as to who was going to get how much. What does it say there? according to his ability. Amen. To every man according to his ability. And God does that for you and me even today. Mm -hmm. He gives you and me gifts according to our ability. What are those gifts? Well, a lot of times when we first start off, we learn that he just gives us one gift. And I do believe that as we are faithful in the exercise of that one gift, then he will take it and give us additional gifts. Now, at the end of this, in case I don't make mention of it at that moment in time, is that when the person who received the one gift didn't do anything with it, what did God do for the man who already had 10 of these talents? What did he do? He, he was given the one talent to he we received the one talent also that's correct yeah. so so he took it away from the one that had one because he yeah. didn't use it but see isn't this interesting he gives one five talents he gives uh, another person two talents and both of those use those talents and god doubled them they again my again my point that we start off with one being faithful in that one mm -hmm. god will continue to use us and those will grow into additional talents. Mm -hmm. So a very good point there. Okay. All right. In verse 16, the person who had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made other five talents. Now, to me, the way I look at this is um, he was investing his talents. He was, says that he was trading. So this individual had the skills to be able to take that five, know how to invest it, what to do with it, so that it grew to another five. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the man who had the two. So that's very important too, as we see here. It says, likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. Mm -hmm. Now, what about the guy that has the one? 
Well, that's verse 18 and following. He that had received the one went and dug in the earth and he hid his Lord's money. What did he do with it? Dug a hole and planted it in the backyard. <laughs> Probably, but it says he buried it. He buried it. So this person is not exercising faith. He's showing fear, mm -hmm. which is actually explained later in this illustration. So after a long time, mm -hmm. verse 19, the Lord of those servants comes and reckons with both of them. The word reckon is an accounting term. Mm -hmm. And so he's going to be reckoning what these individuals have done with the talents. Well, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to go with these Jews. And he, at the end of the tribulation, probably within the first day or so of the millennial kingdom, and it may take several days, but he's going to reckon with all of those Jews who are alive that survive the time of the tribulation. What did you do with the talents that I gave you in the tribulation? And they have to give an account. They'll give an account mm -hmm. for it. Keep in mind, though, God already has it all written down in his mm -hmm. ledger. He knows. He does, because Revelation chapter uh, 20 tells us that every man is judged according to his works. Mm -hmm. And so God's keeping a ledger. And so that's very, very important. Of course, you and I, having been uh, born again during the church age, the reckoning by Christ is already taken place. And when we go to the judgment seat of Christ or the bema of Christ, um, we receive additional rewards for the things that we've done. And the gold and the silver and precious stones are purified. And the wood, hay, and the stubble that he gave us during this time period will all go up in smoke. Exactly. And so that'll all be taken care of. So by the time you reach Revelation 20, he's not talking about anybody in the church age. He's talking about people that have survived the millennial kingdom and have not gone to war against God and his people. And specifically the Jews or all people? All people at that point in time. Okay. But at the beginning here of the millennial kingdom, right now he's talking about the Jews here. Okay. So the ten virgins represented the half of the population and I'm, that's an illustration. I don't know how many will, it will actually be. But five of those virgins were prepared and five, five and weren't. In this illustration, two show faith and wisdom. And one, one does dozens. not. So that's two to one. So, <laughs> okay. Now, he says here that in verses 20 through 21 that these individuals they shared and gave an accounting of their uh, use of the talents. And Christ says what in verse 21? And so he that hath received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me the five talents. Behold, I have gained besides them five talents more. Amen. So then he says to that individual, um, Well done. Well done thou good and faithful servant. Mm -hmm. So because you have been faithful in these five, then I'm gonna make you even have more. So verse 23, his Lord said unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of my Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, isn't that what he said in verse 21 about the guy that had the five talents? Yeah, making them rulers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thou good and faithful servant, well done. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. These individuals going into the millennial kingdom, Enter into the joy that I have to give to you. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine what it's going to be like for those of us in the church age? Very sweet. <laughs> and these are Jewish people he's referring to here. Well, then comes the guy that had the one. And verse 24, Then he that had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not spread. So here then is an illustration of the person who's an unbeliever. Mm -hmm. He said, I know you, 
he really didn't know the Lord. He didn't take that head knowledge and move it into the innermost part of his being. And people today need to do that. Christians have turned so far away from the Lord today that you cannot tell the difference between the people and the leadership in the churches. Mm -hmm. People come dressed in churches in their blue jeans that have been cut off at the knees or whatever the case might be, and they're standing up in front of the congregation as musical groups and whatever. And it's a sad testimony, but that's what's going on today. The, they may seem like they have that spiritual um, well-being with Christ, but they don't honor him really in the way that they're dressing. Mm -hmm. You don't go before the congregation and lead them in your worst clothes. It makes you wonder what their testimony is outside of their time up front at church. Amen, that's mm -hmm. right. So he goes on and he says in verse 25, those first four words say what? And I was afraid. <laughs> the person did not know the joy of his Lord and his master that God has given to us in our Savior, Jesus Christ. He did not have that personal, intimate relationship. All he could do was have this fear. So what does the next part of verse 25 tell us? And he went and hid thy, hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. Here it is back. Here's that one. I'm giving it back to you. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any use for it because I was so afraid of you. Mm -hmm. Sad commentary, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, notice... In verse 27, he said, Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury or interest. Mm -hmm. You see, even a person who doesn't have the skills and the talents that the other two individuals had, he could have at least gone to the bank, mm -hmm. the money changers, and let them invest it for him, and then he would have had the interest. Mm -hmm. So God says, even as simple as that would have been, this person said, no, I'm not going to do that. No wisdom. No wisdom. No wisdom. Just fear. Mm -hmm. Fear was guiding this person. Yeah. So what happens here then at the end of this person, or for the end of this person? He says, take therefore the talent from him, give it unto him who hath ten. the ten talents. Mm -hmm. For unto every one that has shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he has, and cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. What is this all about? Hell. Mm -hmm. Weeping and gnashing of teeth is the description of people that God judges and puts in hell, waiting for the end of the tribulation where they will then be judged according to their works and every man then will uh, receive their just recompense of their reward. So cast that person, into un that unprofitable servant into outer darkness. Well, I have a few things I'd like to share um, with all of you. Romans chapter 12 and verse three says that God gives to every man faith at the very end of that third verse. But we notice too from this description that Jesus used here, uses here, he also gives them talents. Those talents and that faith that God gives to people as gifts and many other things too are to be used for the honor and the glory of the Lord. So it is possible that as we exercise faith in one talent, that God is going to increase our talents just as we saw here with the person who had the two, it became uh, four. The person that had five, it became 10. And he even got the talents and the rewards from those individuals who chose not to believe and trust God. So there's gonna be a large number of talents that God has distributed during the time of the tribulation. And I believe even today that if people don't use them and God uses somebody else to accomplish the work that you're going to do, that he had for you, then that person's going to receive your reward. And double reward. Yeah. <laughs> well, remember this from 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. 
1 Corinthians chapter 12, those first three verses talk about how it is that God uses God the Holy Spirit to give us additional gifts that aid us in the use of our talents. And that's so important. God gives to you and me gifts that enable us to use our talents that God has given us. God, in the uh, time of the tribulation, will give gifts to those who become believers so that they will know what to do and how to behave themselves and conduct themselves during the time of the tribulation. My encouragement to those of you that listen, be faithful, trust God in all of these things, even today and even in the future, no matter how bad things seem to get, God will look after you and take care of you. Another thing too, the Holy Spirit, as I mentioned a moment ago from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, giving us these spiritual gifts to be able to do these things, the Lord Jesus Christ in the church age, we're told that he is giving gifts. And those gifts are the talents or the works. And that is from Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. In that particular portion of scripture, it tells us that we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good, good works. works. Mm -hmm. And so God, the Holy Spirit, gives us spiritual gifts to be able to use the talents, the works that God gives us. You may not know what God has planned for you. Maybe you're a young person or a teenager and you're wondering, God, what do you want me to do? Believe him, trust him, walk by faith that what you're doing today is what he wants you to do. Perhaps it's going to school, being in elementary school, junior high, high school, going into college. You make a decision. I know from my own experiences, the things that I thought God was leading me to do, but then he changed it all for me, changed which college I was going into, changed after I graduated from college and got my first degree that I was earning. He then took me to uh, Faith Baptist Bible College where I then got my uh, Bachelor of Arts degree in Bible and Theology, then Louisiana Christian University about maybe 15 years later where I then got my master's degree. And so... When you're faithfully we, serving the Lord, he guides and directs. That's right. And increases your talents. And he opens up doors for mm -hmm. us. And he shows us more of the word of God, gives us understanding so that we eventually would become teachers or preachers of the word. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. But who's responsible for the increase? God the Father. That's right. We're not. We're not. We are just to be faithful. Sweetheart, if you would, would you read in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 through 8? And I'm going to turn to 1 Thessalonians and share that passage of Scripture. So 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 through 8. Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye be you believed, even as the Lord gave, ev gave to every man? I have planted, Apollos has watered, but God gave the increase. So then, whether neither is he that planteth anything, neither is he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Amen. And that's referring to the Father. The Father gives the increase. Mm -hmm. Jesus gives you the gifts, the Holy Spirit, or excuse me, your work assignments. God, the Holy Spirit, gives you the enablement to do those things. And we just walk by faith and trust that what we're doing with those gifts and, and that's uh, the work that God's given us. And then God will give the increase. So you want to read verse 8? Verse 8 says, Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. And every man that receiveth his own reward according to his own labor. That's right. Amen. In First Thessalonians chapter 3, something very similar here. For what thanks can we render to God again for you? For all the joy with which we joy for your sakes before God. You can cause other people to have joy in their lives because of your faithfulness. And this is what the Apostle Paul is saying here to the people in Thessalonica. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. In verse 10, he talks about something as simple as praying, night and day, praying exceedingly 
that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Mm -hmm. The word of God, as people are preaching and teaching it to you, as you read it and have devotions in it, what's going to happen? You're going to grow in faith. Absolutely. You got any other thoughts about that part yet? Well, and you're talking about prayer, too. Prayer is just a vital foundational element in our Amen. relationship with God, too, that helps grow these talents and gifts that God has given us yeah. because it increases our relationship That's with right. Him. And your ladies' Bible study that you had today yeah. was focused on? On prayer, again, and it's it's the... Um, God provides, uh, gives us many reasons why to pray, and we studied the reasons why we pray, we also studied um, why we oftentimes neglect prayer, what causes hindrances in prayer, and That's examples right. of what God wants us to pray about. So it yeah. was a really good study. Good. Verse 11, he says, Now God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you. Three persons of the Godhead here. The first God's uh, use of God is the word uh, God himself is referring to the work and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And then he went on to say, and our Father, talking about God the Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ. All three persons of the Godhead. Okay. The one that gave you the work to do, the one who's empowering you and giving you spiritual gifts to do it, and God the Father gets the in gives the increase and we get the benefit of it. So notice too, and, and there's other things in these verses, but he says, in verse 13, to the end that he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Amen. Well, one other thing I'd like to point out here in closing is keep in mind the person who's an unbeliever, and we're talking here still about the Jews, in this time frame that we're looking at here at the very beginning of the millennial kingdom, these individuals that do not believe even at that point in time, according to this last verse that's here in Matthew chapter 25 and this portion of scripture there in verse 30, he says, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So don't let that happen to you. Don't be cast aside because you didn't use even the first talent that God gave you, which according to Romans chapter 12 and verse 3 is the gift of faith. Have any other comments before we close? In, in that faith, we can serve the Lord and he will call us faithful at the end. Um, he also, I believe, gives us those talents and gifts so that we can be used of him to lead other people to him and ultimately bringing glory to the Father himself. So it's, um, it's exciting to have these talents and gifts given to us, and we are responsible to be faithful to what God has given us That's in right. serving him. Amen. So wouldn't you like to have it said to you by God the Father, mm -hmm. God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, well done, Thou good and faithful servant. Yep. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Amen. Amen. Well, Father, we thank you again for the opportunity that you've given us to be in your word. And we just pray that as people hear this, no matter which age that we're living in, be it the church age or the time of the tribulation or even in the millennial kingdom, that all of us would bring honor and glory to you. So we thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you again for joining us.